Dr. Christine Lee Healy, and I'm a board-certified rheumatologist. I have treated patients with arthritis and autoimmune disease for over a decade, and some of the most common questions I get on a daily basis are, what foods should I eat to help my condition? What kind of diet is recommended to help with my joint pain? While there are no major clinical trials that have addressed this, I have begun to research these questions which are so important to my patients. Based on the medical literature we have available, I really believe in the power of food choices. And not only have I developed recommendations, but I've also incorporated these into delicious recipes to share with you. We have been talking a lot about how omega-3 and omega-6 have influence on inflammation. How does this actually work? What is actually happening when your joints are painful and swollen? Omega-3 breaks down into eicosapentaenoic acid and then into cytokines or hormones such as prostaglandin E3, leukotriene B5, and thromboxane 3, which help decrease inflammation in the body. Conversely, omega-6 breaks down into arachidonic acid and then into cytokines which increase inflammation in many ways. Prostaglandin E2, leukotriene B4, and thromboxane 2 all work at the cellular level to flare up inflammation. Whether you have strained your knee running or have chronic inflammation in your knee from rheumatoid arthritis, or you walked all day at Disneyland on your knee which has severe bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis, you can imagine a painful knee that is swollen. It is worse than it otherwise would have been because you ate a McDonald's hamburger and fries that has high omega-6 rather than a nice teriyaki salmon filet with edamame salad that has high omega-3. It is more painful and swollen because you have a higher ratio of the inflammatory cytokines than the anti-inflammatory ones, and these cytokines are activated, stimulating pain receptors, increasing white blood cells to come and invade the joint lining to cause swelling, and dilating local blood vessels to increase blood flow to the area, which you feel as throbbing and heat in your knee. This is the part in the pathway where medications can intervene, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or Aleve. But way before this step, you have the potential to decrease your baseline inflammation. So we have to show you how to reduce omega-6 and eat more omega-3 again. Let's get cooking. Today we're showcasing what I call my omega-3 turkey meatloaf, along with a high omega-3 dessert, chia seed pudding. We're using a couple of superfoods, flax seeds and chia seeds, as primary sources of omega-3 in today's meal. An ounce of flax seeds, approximately 3 tablespoons, has 6.4 grams of omega-3. However, as humans, our gut can't digest most of this nutrient unless the flax seeds are ground into a coarse powder or meal. The problem is, if you buy the flaxseed meal, it only lasts a couple of months before it can go rancid. So it's more cost effective to buy the seeds, which can last up to a year. I use my food processor to grind the seeds, or you could use a coffee grinder or a spice grinder. For my meatloaf, I'm using a pound of ground organic turkey. This should feed two to three people. You could also use grass-fed ground beef or veal. I ground up a quarter cup of flax seeds in my grinder, and I'm adding this to my turkey. It replaces the typical ingredient of breadcrumbs. It helps keep the meatloaf moist. I'm also adding two tablespoons of chia seeds. To add even more omega-3, I love putting in spinach. I'm using five ounces of frozen cut spinach, which I've thawed, and you want to squeeze out all the excess water and also chop it up, otherwise it will be stringy in the meatloaf. Fresh spinach has too much moisture and would make the meatloaf too loose. For flavor, I use a quarter cup of grated parmesan, two tablespoons of chopped fresh green onions, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of salt, and a few grinds of fresh pepper. I'm using one egg as a binding agent. I'm just going to use a fork to gently mix these ingredients until well combined.
I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees. I'm shaping the mixture into a long rectangle. Now I've tried different sauces on top and my favorite is ketchup. But don't go overboard on this, just two tablespoons or so because tomato is a nightshade vegetable and can increase joint pain. I'll go into this in a future episode. Great! I'm going to bake this for one hour. While my meatloaf is baking, I want to show you how I make my chia seed pudding. It's really easiest to use a mason jar for this, so you can shake it up easily, which you have to do a couple times before the final finish. I'm putting in a quarter cup of chia seeds. Chia seeds are hydrophilic, meaning they're attracted to and absorb a ton of water. And each seed form, forms this gelatinous coating such that it becomes a pudding consistency. It's a great source of fiber for your gut. Okay, I'm also using a half a cup of almond milk, but you could use soy milk or cow's milk instead. I put in a half a cup of low-fat coconut milk, which adds richness and creaminess. And lastly, I'm putting in two tablespoons of honey. Now you could use agave or maple syrup as well. Great, I'm gonna put on the lid and shake this up. And you put it in the fridge for three to four hours. Now sometime in between now and when you wanna eat it, you shake it up again to break up the clumps. It's super easy. I've plated up my omega-3 turkey meatloaf. It's moist and hearty and chock full of a great omega-3. I serve it along with a couple of simple sides, baked crispy kale and sweet potato hash browns. And for dessert, I have my chia seed pudding. I like to add fresh fruit like strawberries on top. So continue eating these high omega-3 foods. You have the power to keep your baseline inflammation low. I'm Dr. Christine Lee Healy, and these are Cooking Points for Healthy Choice. <laughs>